Okay, we're back in Las Vegas live, siliconangle.tv, siliconangle.com, wikibon.org, the Cube flagship product. We go out and talk to all the experts, thought leaders, executives, CEOs, startups, you name it. Here we're covering the Hewlett Packard Gen 8 launch, uh, extracting the signal from the noise. I'm the founder of Silicon Angle, John Furrier. I'm here with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org. And John, we're really getting into it now. We're starting to hit our stride. We're here with Mark Potter, who is the Senior Vice President and General Manager of HP's ISS Division, Industry Standard Servers and Software. Mark, welcome. Thank you. I'm really uh, glad to be here with you guys. Great. Well, first time in the Cube, so we'll, we'll, yeah. be, we'll be easy on you. Yeah. Uh, well, relatively <laughs> easy. Um, we just talked with Dave Donatelli. He gave us a great overview of some of the market trends and some, some of the segments. Yeah. Um, obviously, you're running the whole project here. It was up on the keynote of the press event. Um, Gen 8 really is part of a bunch of innovation around Project Moonshot, which we covered yeah. on the Cube. The low energy thing was hot. Uh, Odyssey for Mission Critical and that world here. This is kind of the mainstream market. This yeah. is the bread and butter of right. HP. Right. Um, <laughs> And HP's not, everyone knows HP for servers, right? They, yeah. Everyone's got HP servers, HP networking. So you're known, but racks and racks of servers are out there from the big companies to the, to the SMBs. What's the core problem with that Gen 8, this new innovation that comes out with? What are you seeing as the, the core problem? So fill in the blank. The core problem is blank. The core problem really is manual operations and, and the lack of automation in the data center. I mean, when you think about, um, when we went out, we literally talked to and interviewed hundreds of thousands of customers over the two years. We looked at uh, trends, we looked at outage events around the world, we talked to partners, and, and the number one thing they said is, HP, please help us on our manual operations, automate, build it in, make it simple. It's too difficult, we're spending too much time really managing day-to-day -day operations. Too hard to provision, and, and too hard to even do basic updates. So two years ago, mm -hmm. $300 million later, great vision, took a risk, mm -hmm as Dave said, and kind of it worked out. But the market kind of turned around, too. The IT economy was kind of stalled for a bit. Everyone's kind of a bare bone operations, cutting down to the bone. Now it swings back in the other way. Top line revenue is a big driver. Applications uh, tsunami, you're seeing it on the yeah. consumer side. So you see in business drivers, top line revenue, top line revenue. And on top of that, cloud computing, and obviously Moore's Law is always, always in effect, big data. Right. So talk about how the, that all came together. So in your two, two year period, doing all the market research, get everything right, dotting your I's, crossing your T's, and all of a sudden the market lift comes in. Where, how does that affect you guys? Well, I mean, it, it's, it's important because you know, anything of this kind of groundbreaking, you know, architectural significance takes time. And that, that, you know, in, in the, we're in an industry where you've got to make bets. And the trends we saw were, were really, you know, twofold. One, as I, I shared, is that, you know, manual operations in the data center and stranded capacity in the data center were, were really two big issues. Big issues where admins weren't spending time really getting to the innovation, and their, and their businesses wanted them to. And so what was happening is the businesses were moving past IT in, in many ways, and so IT really needed, you know, some help. Second thing is, um, with, with the kind of the whole energy uh, situation we have, when we looked and saw all the stranded capacity in the data center, we knew there had to be a better way. And so we really addressed both of them. The fact of the matter is, the third big thing that we saw in, in with respect to all this is just the incredible growth of the data being stored with unstructured data that you both talked about, big data, uh, and just the scale of the cloud. I mean, more and more customers that uh, we were dealing with every day weren't talking about 10 servers, they were talking about 1,000, they were talking about 10,000. And so we said, why can't we bring that simplicity and scale across yeah, I mean, the board? It's, I mean, it's just the timing is so good on the demand yeah. side. I mean, just when you thought all the prognosticators talk about market share, here's the demand, all of a sudden with the data right. tsunami and these requirements at the edge of the network, which you guys know a lot yeah. about, right? So, so congratulations. Um, and so, go ahead, Dave. You want to so, uh, so, Mark, you know, you've seen a number of transitions in the industry. So, my question is: um, previous transitions transitions have been driven by whether it's you know microprocessor performance or maybe it's you know storage costs lowering. What's driving this latest trend? What is that transition? How would you describe it? What's driving it? Well, I mean, those things are still really important, but but I, I think the the transition this time is really different. It's it's really about how do we get to scale and simplicity and deal with the, um, the scale you know, in a fundamentally different way. How do we deal with the operations of the data center and really um, dramatically simplify and fundamentally deliver shared services to the internal customers? And, and in order to, for 
for IT staffs to really do that, they, they've got to be able to have systems that do much more of the what I'll call basic operations work. They've got to have systems that have the automation built in and that fundamentally, just like we've done, take care of themselves so they can get on to delivering kind of shared services and move much faster. Because the one trend that I see more than anything is the pace of change has picked up dramatically. The economy, as you said, is coming out of, uh, you know, you know, 2008, 2009 slowdown. And it's not just about the economy lifting, it's about the amount of change seems faster than ever. Data explosion, the, the you know, different services are available, and IT's needing to move faster. You know, Donatelli was talking about, um, John, when he was on, and, and Mark, the, the big guys, like the big web guys, Facebook and mm -hmm. Google, and, and, and of course your people, you know, the mm -hmm. traditional data center. Do you see those as a, as a leading indicator, those being the Googles and the Facebooks? I mean, we saw that with Project Moonshot, the hyperscale, yeah. mm -hmm. it was sort of really geared at that audience. And I, you know, I said to Dave, well, in, in even Voyager in a way is, is you know, the trends are really driven by the, the Googles of the world. And what, really what I meant was those guys have been driving automated operations <clears throat> for a while. Do you observe that and say, hey, this is a, 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 an indicator of things to come, you know, or is it more you're on a different parallel path? Well, I mean, I, I think what we, I, I think it's a, an indicator more mm -hmm. than anything. And, and I think, you know, it's back to kind of watching those indicators and saying, the business model is different because um, where, let's say, Google or Facebook maybe has kind of one application across the data center, and I know I'm dramatically simplifying because their IT is much more complicated than one, one, um, one application. No, the you're... enterprise has thousands mm. of applications, mm. and the enterprise needs the simplicity of the, the model that they enjoy, but they need to be able to do it and deliver all those applications. And so with the intelligence we've built in here all the way up to our cloud system product, what we've really allowed the enterprise to do is to have the simplicity of a shared service, just like those customers and those indicators, but we are doing it in their space, allowing them to really take all the applications they have to deliver for IT and do it in the scale and the simple way that, you know, that the yeah, cloud yeah. error it's, demands. That That's takes a lot really of hard work. Here. That takes a lot of hard yeah, work yeah. because we, of the diversity and complexity. Yes, yes. Yeah, case. we have some guys uh, in Santa Clara covering the cloud, uh, small little public cloud mm -hmm. conference, Cloud Connect, and uh, uh, you know, obviously that's the cloud service providers mm -hmm. and that's the emerging kind of the, the public cloud guys. Um, we've talked with SAP, we've talked with HP, and all the big guys in that business. It, they're pretty, it's a battleship, as yes. they say, right? Yeah. So, um, but one of the hot things in the emerging side of this market is DevOps, developer yeah. operations, yeah. where it's a developer-centric yeah. model. So you mentioned applications. How do you guys fit into that mindset? Uh, it sounds like you're treating it like the lower end of the stack, you're providing core infrastructure, kind of Lego blocks, as Dave Donatelli says, but what's your vision for the DevOps world? Because we've had many conversations, contentious <coughs> ones with guests on theCUBE, where, yeah. well, DevOps is, is BS. It's actually ops dev. Developers don't run infrastructure. And if they did, there'd be no tolerance for failure, right? Because developers have bugs in their software. So, you know, there's a whole dynamic going on, but the developer frameworks are expanding. You know, VMware bought Spring Source, we're seeing Hadoop. So more and more developer centric views are out there. What's your vision on that? Well, I, I, I think it's a critically important area. And you know, what HP's all about is, we think, you know, ultimately our cloud and, and the cloud customers needs it all about kind of hybrid delivery. And that cloud um, has to be linked across what I'll call private cloud on premise to um, maybe even managed private cloud where somebody's doing it on your behalf all the way to public cloud. And when you're talking about DevOps, I think that's a critical, that's one of what I'll call one of the most critical use cases across this hybrid cloud. Because if you think about it, developers may want to actually develop part of the application and test it in the public, but they want a seamless way to migrate that application and that service right into the enterprise where the data is protected, where it's secure, et cetera. And, and I think that's going to be an incredibly important use case. And, and it's got to not only map to the private cloud deployment, but also across this hybrid delivery where maybe part of the development is actually done in the public cloud, but it's a, and I also say it's a continuous agile process. It will be done yeah. continuously and you will have to deploy some of that application in the enterprise, in a private cloud, and some of it may actually show up it seems in the public it, cloud. It seems to be where the market's going, and, and I, I guess on a follow, we, first of all, we love mm -hmm. DevOps Angle. In fact, we just launched uh, DevOps Angle vertical that we're mm -hmm. uh, expanding coverage into, because we see it as very relevant. I, I think it's radar. one of the biggest use cases mm -hmm. that's out there that needs solving. 
Um, and it's emerging. So, mm -hmm. you know, as you say, people, things kind of incubate and they get small little communities developing. Mm -hmm. We just covered the Node Summit and Node.js is a, one of the hottest frameworks around yeah. I.O. and yeah. these web apps that are being developed. What inning would you put the DevOps in? If you had to ball, you know, put it into a ballpark terminology. We're early innings. First inning? We're early innings. Third inning? Early, very early. Yeah, third inning. Batting yeah. practice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're in the on Spring deck. Training. No, no. No, we haven't I think made the cuts yet. <laughs> yeah. We're in early, but the, the whole, what I'll call DevOps, and you know, HP has an incredible amount of assets here on application lifecycle management, you know, obviously with our, you know, quality center, et cetera. And so uh, we have more experience here than probably anyone in, in the industry. And so while it's still early, I still think this is an incredibly important use case. Okay, I'd love to follow up with you later on that, but that's yeah. great stuff. Yeah. I, I wanted to, if we have time, just to go into a little bit to your keynote. Yeah, um, uh -huh. Just, some, just to share with some of the fun facts. You said $24 million spent on manual ops over three years. This yeah. is the typical. 10,000 right, square foot data, data center, center, right. $29 million energy cost over mm -hmm. three years. Unplanned downtime cost, you know, in some cases, yeah. $10 million an hour. You're talking about Voyager driving 3x the admin productivity and then giving 30 days back to admins. Yeah. Um, it was interesting, the analyst from Forrester said, and I think he was joking, we gotta watch out because you know we're gonna be losing jobs. Yeah, Rich, I think was, was joking. He was he was joking, but do you ever get that kind of Yeah, you know, you know, sometimes, but in any transformation and any kind of big step that the industry takes, and, and these servers are a big step forward, um, you know, there's a people side to that change. And, you know, I, I think as we talked about it, when we shared the Generation 8 and all the innovations we've put into this proactive insight architecture and what the project has delivered, um, admins are like, you know, it's, they're celebrating. Yeah, yeah. Because, well, you know, they the can majority, do more. they can do more yeah. exactly. Yeah, they're creative. And, and not, it's like, that's laborers. human capital yeah. that is, you know, spending time on doing basic stuff like firmware updates. Yeah, mundane. And, and where, they get, it, where they get fired, by the way, if they screw up. <laughs> you, you know, it's like what I showed, it's like, how long have we been delivering yeah. white papers to the industry for optimized configs? Yeah. Why can't we deliver a mobile app and take that white paper and have something and as simple as a QR code mm -hmm. and automate that whole thing with that intelligence. Mobile app, yeah. I want to apply this optimized configuration to that server plus a thousand others. So this is great news for you server admins up there, out there, you know, update the skill sets and start making applications run faster, delivering more business value, that's where it's at. And uh, I agree, I think that is uh, exciting for, for that class. I, I just was telling John, I wrote a piece on the Wiki, Wikibon Wiki, mm -hmm. how storage admins can remain or you can remain relevant, and I think there's a server admin analog here in, yeah. in this. Yeah, we're seeing the same thing in the, in the Oracle d world where the the DBA is moving from that title to something much broader, data scientist, and or more you know more specialized, not some database administrator. Right. So seeing a lot of roles change in IT, so it's right. exciting. And that's good news, actually. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's, uh, sometimes it's hard. Change is good. Yeah, change right, is absolutely. good. Okay, we're here with Mark Potter from HP, Senior Vice President of the uh, Gen 8 project here. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. We really appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Thank you guys Mark, for pleasure. the time. Okay. Good to see you. My good. pleasure. Thanks Welcome for having for, me on theCUBE. Okay, first time on theCUBE. We now have another, another alumni to put on the list with Jim Gantier and a slew of other HP execs. That was good. Another uh, first time so he, person. So he basically validated the David Floyer's assessment yeah. of the core problem, which was operations. Yeah. Okay.